Hello, boys and girls. Here we are at uh, my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, which is turning into MLB Pearls of Wisdom, basketball, football, everything. I have to change the name because we're doing all sports here now. We got it. We got set up with. Uh, I well, first of all, let me tell you, every I'm Pearl of Wisdom. This is Steel Flyers. This is Bork. You should know these guys by now, but if I have to tell you, I guess I have to tell you because uh, you're all over at the Steel Flyers www Steel Flyers website, right? So, and uh, if you're over there, if you're not over there yet, just wait. <laughs> it's going to be it absolutely be. amazing, 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 amazing. Anyways, we've been doing uh, predictions uh, for all the play playoff series so far this year. This year, so we thought, why not we do the Stanley Cup as well? And uh, hey, so now, what do you know, the Stanley yeah, Cup? We have the Stanley Cup Finals. We haven't been keeping our record. I know we all didn't get the biggest one right, but we'll talk about that as we go on here. But I'm going to send it over to Steel Flyers because he, uh, to me, is one of the finest hosts in the land. Steel Flyers, what? tell us about this series. Tell us about your thoughts about where, how we got here and all of those sorts of things, my friend. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for having me on. It's always a pleasure. It's always um, it's always great to work with such great professionals. Uh, the Professor Joe over there, how you doing, buddy? Doing well. I would be better if the Phillies didn't absolutely suck at baseball, but still doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah, like they win one, and then they tank a couple, and then they win one, and then it's like, well, okay, whatever. So, and uh, Pearl Wisdom, thanks for having me on here, man. It's, it's really great. Um, a lot of great things have been going on here and stuff like that. And so, I'll tell you what. Yeah, we, we didn't get the uh, Vegas – we didn't get the Vegas series right. But I will say this. I did pick Dallas as my sleeper team way you back. So. You did so. So, da, 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 da. All right. That's the only thing I got because I got almost every other series wrong. We thought we were going to be talking about the Flyers and Vegas and or Dallas and or et al. Western League. Somebody he had, had he had Tampa lean towards Tampa. Right, yeah, right, right. Tampa yeah, we, yeah, we all we the all Flyers started struggling. I said Tampa would make it, and I thought Vegas would be the other team. But. Right, right here is where we were thinking that the Flyers were going to go. Of course, right, but but up here we really knew that it was going to be Tampa Bay. So, and as it turns out, it was. Eventually, finally, uh, Tampa Bay was able to put down the, the New, New York Islanders uh, in game six. Um, and that's, we kind of all were anticipating that. Uh, we were just kind of expecting it a little bit sooner rather than later, uh, you know. So, um, I'll tell you what. This is going to be a really awesome matchup because I think you're going to have a fast team, a high scoring team in Tampa Bay. And now you've got some scorers on Dallas, but you got somebody, especially with their goalie Hudobin, and especially the way they play with Hudobin in instead of Bishop, which is the point that Professor Joe made way back when we did all these men. So that's what I want to touch on. Uh let's get right into that. Okay. That matchup right there. The the two goalies, um Vasilevsky and Hudobin and whoever else they're going to have, Bishop and or um, McKinney, right? So let's start off with you, uh, Joe. McElhaney, you th I think. McElhaney, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, so what do, you th what do you think about that? Let's start off with the goalie matchups. Uh, well, it's a very good goalie matchup. I mean, Hudobin's playing his heart out right now, and you got Vasilevsky, who is a Vezina goalie. So, I mean, th that's a very good – and if there was a Vezina for the postseason – <laughs> so Dobin would be that guy right now. So, yeah, yeah. okay, all right. A very, very good uh, goalie match. Vazzy would be in second, but Hudobin, I mean, 930 save percentage to a 917. Uh, you can't, I mean, that's just a ridiculous clip of a save percentage. Um, so, yeah, he, they're going to go where he and now Jamie goes because Jamie Bennon uh, really started picking it up in last series and normally as much as it might not be the way it should go normally if you do well in the conference finals and the finals that gets you the playoff mvp it kind of negates yeah. the series it's like nobody gives a crap you got <laughs> to the top, the yeah. top finals you did good in the finals yeah. i don't know if that should necessarily be the case but with how good jamie ben played if he plays equally as good and they win then yeah he probably would deserve it because he was starting to play 
very good 200 foot. You saw game one, he immediately hit somebody on the first shift of game one to set the tempo for Dallas. So if he's able to continue to do that, that's going to be huge. But uh, I think, think, so you think that, do you think Dallas is going to go with Hudobin first and then they're going to go with uh, Vasilevsky with Tampa Bay? Well, yeah, well, Tampa's definitely going to go with Vasilevsky because McElhaney's a journeyman. Uh, And then uh, Hudobin will definitely start for Dallas because if they don't start, I mean, he should. If they don't, if they don't start Hudobin, I don't know what yeah. to do yeah. with him. Yeah, yeah, but they yeah. put in Bishop. The only other goalie for them that looked good in this postseason wasn't Ben Bishop. It was Ottinger when he played the third period. He went five right. for five on saves and robbed somebody on the PK. Yeah. Where Bishop looked terrible when he got put in because he looked all out of sorts and yeah. wasn't in sync with the team and throwing it around the boards. And then they're like, okay, I'll take that and just score. Yeah. So, yeah. I would say you got to roll with the hot hand, especially when your hot hand is having a historic overall playoffs, let alone just this year. So. Exactly. Exactly. Perlo, uh, lay some wisdom on, on the goalie matchup here. Um, we, we did talk about that, and that's something that we touched on too, and, and maybe that's something you can maybe um, break us out on, is how the teams play differently with Hudobin in compared to with Bishop in. You know what I mean? And then, uh, I mean, what do you think about the goalie matchups? Well, um, Vasilevsky, we kind of, I, 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 I don't know. I, I'm going to say I kind of forget about how great of a goaltender Vasilevsky is sometimes because yeah. Tampa man, Bay is such a good, good. They yeah. ju- Oh, man. When it came down to crunch time, he was definitely hitting. Now, I, I was actually, I, I'm not a stats person. I'm weird. I actually kind of avoid stats a lot of times when I'm making my decisions. Uh, I will check them out every once in a while, but I, I'm an energy person. And uh, Vasilevsky, I think the reason why his save percentage has been so a little bit higher is that Tampa Bay has been playing more a high-flying type style of uh, game where um, Dallas has been uh, playing, allowing shots from out the outside perimeter. Not to mention Vegas was play, holding their, tight, their sticks way too tight. They were shooting right in his stomach constantly all the time so um now for what for bishop and happy and and i almost said happy bullen again hudobin uh he uh i don't know why he reminds me of happy bullen apparently yeah but when you look at the way it's spelled it almost looks like it should be you know what i mean so yeah, I, 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 I I almost stumbled on that too so you're i in think the same i love i loved happy bullen too for a lot i of did reasons. too he was a good goalie yeah but um for the same sort of reasons now, Hudobin has got a personality that brings energy to a team. He is a person who exudes not really confidence isn't the right word for me. It's optimism and fun. Yeah, okay, I'll buy that. He, he is a fun guy, apparently funnier than hell in the room. So Dallas, although they've been playing, um, well, how do I explain it? Not... <laughs> Not as good as the opposition, let's put it that way. Uh, they have been playing what the term that's been coming out now is opportunistic. And um, I yeah. would like to say they've been just playing looser on their stick. When yeah. you see like Radulov, when he's, he's picking corners, uh, they're picking corners on the, on, on the um, they were picking corners on Laner. Uh, one of the big things I had and I saw in that series, and I mentioned it earlier, what I was concerned about was the whole energy thing with Laner and Flurry. Um, yeah, yeah, that I, was really that that whole thing. Just that yeah, I'm with you on low, that. That was a low energy thing. Like if I was. was as far as I was concerned, if you were going to have Flurry not be a man in the playoffs, it it would if you it would have been a good idea to trade him at the deadline if you can or something like that because I didn't like that. And Flurry is such an incredible human being. Everybody loves Flurry. And he, and he honestly did have a difficulty with being the backup there. And that energy was in that room. And Dallas's energy was with Hudobin, who is like, come on, guys. Uh, you know, like, so they are playing. Yeah, he's the cheerleader guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With you. He's I a big, know, by the it. way, they have a, he has a 920. Uh, save, percentage. save percentage. That was his, re- his regular season save percentage was a nine thirty. His uh, his uh, postseason is a nine twenty. So it's kind yeah. of a, 
say percentage wise. Yeah. Um, and so he does I, have he does so have I, a shutout too. So. No, yeah, in fact, here in Tampa Bay. is a nine thirty one. Yeah. You're not going to have that here in Tampa Bay. Uh, you don't have that. I mean, I see a very positive energy going on there in Tampa Bay. Uh, so that's going to be a little bit of an interesting contrast. Now, Vasilevsky is, um, like I talk about Carter Hart a lot, nothing seems to phase that guy. Like, he yeah. just rolls through everything. Yeah. He doesn't have a personality like that, but he's very, he's not up and he's not down. Very even keel, you know, especially, very calm. Yeah, especially because, uh, like I said, well, I was accidentally looking at regular season stats. He had a 917 that he brought up to a 931. For the postseason. Save percentage in the postseason. Yeah, that's so pretty smart. That's a pretty yeah. good, now, save percentage yeah. can be because of your team, but let's be honest, they have left some guys wide open and Vasilevsky uh, has robbed them to help. Uh, yeah, that's that. for sure. And 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 uh, and let's face it, the Islanders had they did exactly what they did against us, and they had a lot of um, guys um, standing in front, point blank shots. You know what I mean? That's the kind of game that they they were playing. They were able to spend some time down there in the zone. You know what I mean? And get those chances like that by passing it around and getting guys in front of him and stuff like that. So. I'm not expecting this series to be like one to, to nothing or two to three or anything like that. I'm expecting them to be much higher. Goal total, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm expecting there to be more goals goals scored because of guys like I mean, man, Klingberg was just flying around for that series. And 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 Jamie Ben was just flying around. I mean <sighs> We also got a lot of the guys coming from the Tampa Bay that were flying around too, scoring Edmund, a lot of goals. Edmund, I, but that's what I – okay, so I don't see this as being a defensive series. You know what I mean? And you touched on it earlier, Joe, when you were talking about how Ben was playing. You know what I mean? So what? why don't you elaborate a little bit on that, Joe, and, and kind of give us a little bit more of a feel of why you think maybe – I mean, are we're all leaning towards Tampa Bay on this, or I mean, what do you think? Well, Jamie Ben started playing. It seems like, well, also to an oomph degree, like he normally plays, where it seems like they got him to focus a little bit more on kind of bruising people in the defensive zone as well, and playing uh, great in that zone, which he's playing never been bad at. It's just he seems right. like playing his best 200 foot game I've ever seen him play in that last series. Agreed. So the other thing is Sagan is kind of now getting his confidence back up wherever you put him. He's blocking shots for you. I mean, he's all of a sudden playing defense now. Uh, so that's helpful. Um, even if he's not doing great on offense, I don't care because he's a quicker skater. If he's playing good defense, he's going to be yeah. a guy that if you can convince him to play defense, he's going to get back on most opposing runs. Exactly, especially so, with that 200-foot game, you know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. so um, that, that's that been working. You've been getting a lot of your offense because of Heiskanen and Klingberg uh, always finding ways, especially Klingberg, always finds a way to get the puck through. And then Heiskanen is, has a very good shot and almost – um, if you get him set up on the right side as a shot of a, a forward um, rather than yeah. defenseman. Um, yeah, no, I agree. So, uh, it's going to be a fun series. I don't think Tampa's going to win in five by any stretch. This is going to go at least six games. Um, and I think Tampa will win. But also the caveat is Braden Point. Braden Point played injured. If Braden Point can't play one of these games, they're going to lose because it's just with the way they've been. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, he's like, unless if he's their Stammer, stick. Unless yeah. if Stammer all of a sudden is announced yeah. as he's playing when points out, and it's like, and Stam coaches play. It's like, wait, wait, what? Right. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, they've lost both of the games. Point didn't play. Agreed. Yeah. So if Braden Point's not in, he seems like the new Stam coach, where the team runs through him. And yep. if they don't have him, it's like they're missing a big piece of their puzzle. It's not like they're missing a small piece of their puzzle. It seems like they're missing, if you had a 1,000-word puzzle, they have about 800 pieces of it. Yeah, and right there with that. Yeah, yeah, piece. no, I'm with you. So, so like, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's kind of the issue there. Point, I do think, though, is a very tough kid. So if he can play, he's not going to let gonna John. Be, yeah, yeah, I agree. He's yeah, going to say, I know I'm playing in this game. We'll right. deal with this after the season. Yeah. But, so, 
Perlo, you got a different you got a different uh, angle on this here. Um, do you think maybe more the Tampa Bay is going to be more of the uh, more of the outscoring of the Dallas guys. Uh, we talked a lot about the Sagans and the, and the, uh, you know what I mean? And the Klingbergs and the stuff like that. Um, and you mentioned, um, Hedman. And then we also mentioned point. Now here's the other thing too. That's really kind of, let's, let's sprinkle a little bit of this in here too. Stan Coast is skating. Uh, we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Yeah. So with, the way the player that you said, uh, Pearl, I can't think of his name right now off the top of my head. The way he's been playing is making it seem like they're missing Stamkos even less. Kucherov, man. Uh, yeah. Oh no, Sorelli. Sorelli, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorelli. They seem to be. I was just going to mention that they brought that up. If that's, point yeah. is not, <clears throat> if point yeah. is not playing, isn't it awesome to have the advantage of having Johnson and Sorelli to? Oh, but it t- just still hasn't worked. No, I mean, <laughs> but that, that's but, but it's it's a pretty cool thing to have that option now. You have Sorelli and Johnson as your top two. A lot of teams that is their top two. You know, so um, it's not like Tampa's out of it because point is they'll, they would just have to learn how to connect with yeah. those two guys. But he's so a good barometer, have- though, too. You know what I mean? And so that was the point that you had made even before we got on air. Perlo was the fact that, you know, he was he, he kind of looked a little hobbled there. And and I like what you said, too, Joe, about the fact that he's if he's a tough kid, he's going to be out there and he's going to tell the oh, coach. Yeah, he played injured, I think. You That's, tell yeah, he yeah, exactly. You just how I mean? badly is he injured? I'm hoping it's a growing thing and he just needs some sports athletic, uh, you know, therapy, massaging and whatever yeah. he gets it yeah. out of. Walk it off, kid. Walk it off. You'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, the thing, if he's in, like. Um, but I said this about Vegas, but it's even more with Tampa Bay. The depth on Tampa Bay as forwards are concerned. Like I just mentioned it. If he's in, now you can put Johnson on the wing. you got Sorelli on yeah, the Yeah, you got way up. more options. You've got Palat up there. You have uh, uh, Goudreau, who they just got. Maroon is on your fourth line. Okay, Maroon's probably a third liner on almost every team in the league, and you're playing him on your fourth line. Verheeg has been looking fantastic. I know, sure. and I like, I really do like how Maroon's, Maroon's been playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He keeps I'm making the say. Stanley Cup. So. Yeah. And, and yeah. Coleman, and, you know, like this is a very, very deep team, deeper than the Vegas team on forward for sure. Defense, I agree with that. The problem is energy. When points not in, their energy doesn't seem the same yeah. for whatever odd reason. Because like you said, they still have all the depth. You would think they would be able to have the pick-me-up, but in the postseason, they haven't had that. When, 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 like, point, when point's not in. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. Uh, it's like uh, pun um, intended, uh, <laughs> they're missing the point of attack. When dun, dun, dun. <laughs> great segue into that one <laughs> but yeah but but that's exactly it though they haven't been able to muster the same kind of uh want to uh without point being in the lineup and he's obviously that emotional leader in the locker room you know what i mean and so and he's obviously that emotional leader on the on on the ice too so all right so let's go with you pearls Drop some wisdom on us, man. What do you think? Give us your outlook on the game, the series. Who do you think is going to be hoisting the cup? Well, yeah, I just want to mention a little more about Point because it has something to do with my uh, yeah. Oh, pick yeah. here. Um, when Point's in the lineup, what pe- people kind of forget about Point a lot of the times is because he plays such a good two-way game and he's one of the best two-way players in the league already, is he's ex- also extremely creative. And if Sorelli and Johnson are there, they lose a lot of creativity in their lineup. And Tampa's built on that. Kucherov is one of the most creative players there, yeah. there, there is in the league. And having a center that can keep up with his mind means a lot. It takes a lot away from Kucherov's play. If you got to play with a guy like Sorelli, who's great, but he's like a drive to the net, you know, type guy where he's not going to get you the puck as much as anywhere near as much as point. Not, so, not as much of a playmaker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if point is out, okay, 
now you're looking at a Dallas team that can get their saliva going. You know, they're, they're going to be like, okay, we can, this type of game is the game that we can grasp, right? So I'm going to say, um, if points not out, I'll go as far as to say it, I'll go seven games. If points not in, it, it depend, even if he's playing, if he's playing injured, um, I think then it could be six and I'll go Tampa Bay. Um, I think Vasilevsky is going to rock. I, I think that eventually Tampa Bay will figure out Dallas. I, I, I keep on going back to the fact that you can't out, get outplayed every game and win. You just can't. It's just logic will tell you they, they got outplayed by Vegas almost every single game and they still won. Okay, they were opportunistic. They were loose, whatever the case may be. There was some energy problems in Vegas's room. You're not going to have that in Tampa Bay for all the reasons that you just mentioned here about points. And uh, you have and, and uh, some of the other guys that they have, the leaders on that team, Hedman being one of them, it's not going to be a problem. Um, so I think I'm going to lean Tampa Bay and I'm going to say six. Okay. Six games, Tampa Bay lean. All right. All right, professor. Lay some class on a schoolist. What you got here, buddy? Well, I think Tampa, we talked about the depth. They have obviously a point plays. That was a perfect way of explaining that, uh, how Steve put creativity. You can't, have a guy that's all over great at whatever the heck he feels like doing that day in Kucherov with someone that they have great players in Johnson and Sorelli. They're just not Braden Point. Not most people in the league aren't yeah. Braden Point. <laughs> yeah, that's true. One yeah, of the yeah, best that's true. Both yeah, ends yeah. of the ice. And also one of the more creative people on both ends of the ice. Because when he's in his defensive zone, he's be like, how the heck did he just get around both of those people to put clearly mm. a puck on the ice? <laughs> Play. He's amazing with the stick. Yeah. For sure, yeah. uh, so that um, really helps them to then get the puck up to, obviously, one of the fastest forwards in hockey, also in Nikita Kucherov, that then just starts the rush up the ice. And then if you have Hedman or Sergachev or whoever, um, Shaddenkirk's playing like a beast this playoffs, behind, coming up behind them on defense, you can throw it back like they do sometime. And that's how they have a great chance. Um, yeah, because they get I you think, in that transition there, too. I think Tampa's the team that would be able to figure out Dallas. If the Islanders won, I think Dallas wins the Stanley Cup. With Tampa winning because of their depth and the fact that they can score in all four lines, where the Islanders have one of the best analytical fourth lines, the problem is they're not very good at scoring. Uh, Tampa can score on all four lines. Yeah. That's going to, I think, eventually catch up to Dallas for exactly what Steve's saying. It's like in baseball, you see teams winning that have a minus 30 run differential. You know, eventually that's usually going to catch catch up up. with somebody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, So that's why it it seems like it's going to eventually catch up to Dallas. Now, the caveat is if Anton Hudobin keeps playing like Dominic Hasek, then you're going to have an issue there. But yeah. I, I, yeah. Think they're, Slightly. I think Tampa's going to figure out how to get people in front of the net more, also be creative on some lines, more physical on other lines like they are, and okay. kind of throw off uh, Dallas. That's why I agree with Steve. I think it'll be in six games because I don't think there's going to be an easy series by any stretch of the imagination. I okay. think a lot of these games, even if they're high scoring in some, will be close just because Dallas has been opportunistic, exactly as yeah. Steve said. So they could have way less shots, but it could still be a 5-3 score. Yeah. Uh, where the five would be an empty netter. So, like, that's uh, I got you. That's um, where I think this series is going to go. I think it's going to be close games most of the time, but Tampa, just due to the little bit added depth and uh, skill to their team, not little bit, added depth and skill to their team that's more experienced and proven, where Dallas has a lot of these youngsters that are really stepping up for them. That, that could also eventually catch up to you in the playoffs, especially when you're facing a team that got the experience, got knocked down, and then is coming back up this year. And they definitely don't want to lose to a sleeper team in the state. <laughs> yeah. Great, great, great way to say that because I'm going to say this, and this is something that we haven't touched on at all throughout this entire conversation. Dallas has been, what, four days now waiting? Five? Yeah. It's going to be six days now before they play a uh, hockey game. 
Mm-hmm. And and Tampa Bay is only coming in after two days. You know, maybe and, they had and, a lot of AV martinis. And, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I studied film. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, so they've been able to heal up. They've been able, and and I believe that Tampa Bay is coming in a little bit hobbled, especially with Point coming in a little bit hobbled, and you know what I mean. And and not everybody playing a hundred percent, and only playing a game, you know, two days ago. In reality, really. Um, a hard fought game, and the game before that was a double overtime. You know what I mean? So they've played some pretty is, hard hockey. Yeah, that is a good point. Who that advantage would lean towards because Dallas been rested, so they're not going. They're going to have to get their legs churning again. But they've also been rested. Where Tampa, because of keep playing, got banged up more. Exactly. So that is going to be interesting. Uh, how that? I think granted, it's going to go all seven. Yeah. That would affect the first game or two, though, more so right. than the whole series. Yeah. Agreed. But we also know that if you look at the statistics, whoever usually wins that first game, usually what, has a 70, like 76% chance of winning the series? Whoever uh-huh. wins the first game, you know what I mean? And then if you go on to win the second game, your your chances exponentially go for winning the Stanley Cup. So that's why I think this is going to go seven games, and I'm picking Dallas. Yeah, I figured you. I had a feeling you were going to do that. Um, there's a couple other things we didn't mention. I know we're going a little long here, but um, Dallas, you you have two great coaching matches. That's one of the things that I'm going to be really looking at here. I. Um, I'm one of the few people that love, love, love Cooper. I think Cooper is fantastic. Yeah. I thought they were Done brilliant. Done a really good job. After that awful that good happened job. with Columbus. Um, and then you have this feel-good story of Rick Bonus, who's been in the league for 30 years. I know. Uh, you know, was a, was basically an assistant for the last decade or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and there is another energy thing where these guys just love him. In fact, I heard in uh, – and I usually don't even pay attention to – uh, much to what guys say in interviews and stuff like that, because it's usually just a bunch of blah, blah, blah. It doesn't mean anything. But right. they said, uh, I think it was Radulov who said, we're playing for him. We're playing for him. So they want him. They love him. And um, over in Tampa Bay, it's almost like they're doing the same for Cooper, because Cooper was probably before this – when this playoffs was on a hot seat, if they would have went out in the first or something like that, pretty much Cooper was gone. So these guys are playing for Coops as well. And he, yeah. Cooper has changed his way of being uh, a coach this year. Agreed. Bonus. Remember when we met, I mentioned that bonus was like losing his mind behind the bench. It looks like he was having a heart attack all the time. This last half of that series, he stopped that stuff. And okay. now he, much more relaxed he looks much more uh uh in tune to the game rather than reacting to the game right so um i wanted to mention that i also wanted to mention the big thing and reason why i kind of like your pick with dallas honestly i'm not as super sold on uh tampa as i was with vegas is Corey perry joe pavelski you know, Joe Pavelski hasn't won a cup. These guys are wanting to win a cup. Perry has been a friggin' uh, hungry energy beast for that team. Hungry. Hooked and you the- know that's why they got him, too. Because you know in the regular season, Corey Perry isn't m- much anymore. Yeah. He's just a good bottom six guy that can beat a guy up beat on the up. other yeah. Yeah. <laughs> these, are, these amazing character guys are coming out where they didn't in the regular season in the playoffs is what I was trying to say. And yeah, exactly. Dallas. Because they have they have the better playoff game and they're more suited for playoff games than they are for, you know what I mean? Regular we've season. talked yeah, we Pearl, you've mentioned this throughout me all of the all of the shows that we've done about how guys play differently in the playoffs and and there's guys more suited to playing in the playoffs. And I just think that Dallas just seems to be more of a team suited to playing in the playoffs. Yeah. I just you know what like I, mean? I said, I understand your point. But I just they got outplayed by Vegas every I can't get that out of my head. I'm you not can't disagreeing. Get Tampa Bay and win. You're yeah, no, have- I'm not disagreeing. But if they got outplayed by a Vegas team, and we already know that Tampa Bay is gonna come in, and even if Stamkos doesn't come in, okay, I mean there is a possibility that Stamkos does come in, and if he does come in and is able to 
come in and play and be a contributor, then that changes the dynamics completely, obviously. But it also just changes the dynamics in general because it's Steven Stamkos. I mean, right. he's a guy you're going to game plan for exactly. regardless whether of whether he's, he's 100%, at 100% or right. Because yeah. they're not going to reveal that before the game because everybody hides right. everything. Usually, like five minutes before, it's like, oh, such and such is playing today. It's like, wait, what? What? Huh? Oh, no. <laughs> you know, uh, well, I don't know reverse. how they're going to fix their lineup yeah. if that's the case. Yeah. If points healthy, because you have so many guys that are playing well, you're going to have to boot somebody that's playing well in order to put Stamkos. Yeah, right. Yeah, but, you know, these are all things that are going to contribute to the series, and I think it's going to be I think it's going to be one of the more exciting series. If you look at the ratings, man, the NHL ratings have been off the charts as far it as— It helps that you have teams that are sleeper teams compete, making it a little bit because people like the underdog, too, and then you have Tampa, who people thought would be good, that some probably bet on making the Stanley Cup. Exactly. So they're probably very holly jolly and happy yep. today. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so <laughs> that's, uh, that's why— um, I think uh, that that's the okay. case, too. You have ratings. you got to have a good series of an underdog versus who's supposed to be a top dog everybody thought would be a top dog. Exactly. But I also want to say something else, too, real quick. Kudos to the NHL for having the bubbles, bubble uh, in Toronto and then moving everybody to Edmonton and still being able to maintain zero uh, positive tests. Uh, they are now what seven weeks in now. This, About this coming, eight. we're almost seven weeks into the start into this now. You know what I mean? So uh, kudos to the NHL for doing it right and yep. for showing everybody how to do it right. Yep. In okay? fact, I think you're going to see a different playoff from now on. I think they're going to use something like this system from now on. It's been so successful that uh, I think that's what you're going to see. You probably uh, want to expand it a little less than this year, though. Agreed. This year would be more than half the league. Like, the regular season would kind of become somewhat moot. Only two Uh, teams, maybe. Like, for some teams. Like, you could kind of just pack it in when you're – like, if Tampa had a great first half, they could just be like, yeah, time to go to the beach, boys. Time to get some (laughs) – Yeah, right. We'll we'll, we'll see you back in January. (laughs) It's it's not going to be quite like this, but the whole system of the way they did the playoff structure and stuff like that, it's going to be something like it. They're going to do some things that will – Some things are going to change, I'm sure. That was set up for a joke, so I had to take it. Uh, Yeah, we had – couldn't resist that one. (laughs) I want to say, Mr. Commissioner, and I know you're watching, Mr. Of course he is. Who, who would not be. be watching? Everybody's That's right. Watching. So, uh, <laughs> thanks. You, I, I have said all along, and people thrash Batman, and I'm like, no, dude. Batman to me is an amazing commissioner. We're lucky to have him. He's done a fantastic job. His only Achilles and, heel has been the CBA, which he got done during a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great job. Great job by the NHL. Yeah. That's literally been his only Achilles. I, I, I like. I've. Um, that's the only reason I've ever got mad at Gary because of the pan- not the pandemic because of the uh, CBA, CBA and which, also keeping the players out of the yeah. Olympics. Well, I don't think that was him. I think that was ownership. Uh, I don't know how much. I don't know. Like well, he would have had to whether that was ownership. him yeah. or ownership. He was he was leading the charge on that. Whether it it appeared that way or not. It just oh, that yeah, kind of left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. We could we, we could make this go really long. Yeah, let's not go there. Yeah, <laughs> I was just trying to say thanks to the NHL but for doing such way, a great job. Like, yes. the Olympics back, which I think shows that he actually wanted to have the Olympics and the owners didn't. I think that shows that more. Um, and then okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. And yeah. who um, he got his one Achilles heel solved. During a crisis, yep, and the, CBA. the league back at the same time. So yeah. that that, that yeah. baseball can't even get a CBA done, not during a crisis. So then they thought they could get it done during a crisis, which makes them just seem so dumbfoundingly stupid. But you know, the NHL is uh, doing a very good job right now. My commissioners would go Bettman, Silver, and then everybody else. Yeah, NHL has done fantastic. It's going to be it's 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 growing, and I can't wait till more people in the U.S. get to appreciate this fine sport. For sure. Will, because Rob Manfred's digging baseball into a grave. So there you yeah. go. Speaking of enjoying some NHL, Perlo, buddy, how can we get a hold of you, man? And how can we follow you? 
Um, you guys definitely need to hit the like and subscribe and follow this guy. Let's let's find out how we can uh, follow you. How can we follow you there, Perlo? I've already mentioned it, www.steelflyers.com. You just go, my friends of uh, Steel Flyers, look me up. I got all my information there. Uh, I, you know, I've got other stuff, but whatever. I just love this, what this website's going to be. So go over there. When we have it up, I'm telling you, man, it's going to be one of your main websites you go to every morning. You're going to get up and go, ah, and <laughs> If I wasn't part of it, I'll tell you, I would be excited for this coming up. It's going to be incredible. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Professor Joe, how can we follow you, man? How can we get a hold of all your great stuff, man, for sure? Uh, Twitter is at JJ Borick, B O R E K 26. And then uh, everything else is on steelflyers.com, other than uh, OT Heroics and Pub Sports. I also write for it. Yeah, man, for sure. Two of the best here, two of the pros. This is, this is what we uh, try to strive for uh, is to bring you guys the, the best uh, in, in sports information. And that's what we're trying to do right here. So thank you guys very much. I'm Steel Flyers. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, at Steel Flyers 52, and also come to the website, www.steelflyers.com. Uh, one stop shop to get a hold of the professor and a hold of Pearls of Wisdom. You can get all their information right there and follow them for sure. Uh, we would like to thank you guys and get that like button, hit that subscribe button. You, you got to see these guys on a regular basis because they will keep you in the know. Just remember, folks, stay safe, stay strong, and hang tough.